Lillian, you're on with Gabe Gomez. Hi, Mr. Gomez. I just want to tell you, I got my absentee ballot. I voted for you. And I did that because we've got to clean that mess up down there. I'm 67. I can't take it anymore. So please, if you go down there, you got to straighten out all the IRS, <laughs> the Attorney General. You can just go on and on. Uh, Lillian, thank you. Uh, I, I agree. You know, the, the, those three scandals, the IRS, every one of these by itself is one of the most chilling things that you can think about. The IRS targeting people because of the political beliefs. The Justice Department seizing records of the press. And we still don't have answers on Benghazi. And, and, and to think that Congressman Markey thinks that it's more important to protect the reputation of a former Secretary of State because they may run for president in 2016 as opposed to finding out what and what happened in Benghazi when one of them was a former SEAL here from Massachusetts, from Winchester, is beyond disbelief in my view. And that just epitomizes what's wrong with down in D.C. They're more worried about protecting themselves and their p political parties as opposed to serving the people and getting to the bottom of these three scandals, which individually by themselves would have shocked and rocked any other administration in history. Should Eric Holder resign? Absolutely. That was asked in the first debate. He should absolutely resign. It is unbelievable that he would not resign or even you know assign a special investigator to figure out what happened within the justice department targeting you know seizing the records of the press as well as the IRS you know seizing the records of uh, or targeting people or groups because of political beliefs uh, this is just one of the many reasons he should resign Christina you're on with Gabe Gomez Hi Gabe I'm really happy about your campaign I support you I'm so tired of Marky um, he's been around too long. He needs to give um, Gabe Gomez a chance. We need new energy, new blood. I appreciate that, and I think a lot of people are going to be thinking the same way you are on June 25th. It's, four, it's 13 days away, and I, I, I hope to, uh, to get the respect of all the people out there, and then equally as important, I hope to earn their vote on June 25th. Andy, you're on with Gabe Gomez. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Mr. Gomez. How are you? Doing well, sir. Um, I had two, uh, two quick things. Uh, Mr. Gomez, you've uh, said a couple of different times that you uh, uh, d defended the, uh, the Constitution. You remained uh, vigilant to that. How can, you, um, how can you reconcile that, though, with your statements about um, the, um, the whistleblower uh, for the NSA uh, in the Fourth Amendment, so it's basically saying uh, with unreasonable searches and seizures without a warrant, and how can you say you um, support the immigration bill, uh, the Gang of Eight bill, when Rubio just said on Univision that there will be no border security, legalization comes first, and in the Constitution it says we are guaranteed a Republican form of government free of invasion. If this was, chi if this was Chinese nationals coming across the border, we would be getting them out. These people are not just Mexicans, these people are people from the Middle East, from, from uh, Asia. Basically, uh, how can you say you defend the Constitution when you're for amnesty and you're very critical of Ed Snowden, who is criticizing that the NSA program assaults the Fourth Amendment because it violates uh, uh, the, the, the you need a warrant to be uh, a specific warrant uh, protecting us from unreasonable searches and seizures. Sure. On the first one, uh, I just can't be more clear. I'm not for amnesty. As I said, I think if you if you don't do anything, that is amnesty. And I'm not I'm not for doing nothing. I am for having immigration reform. Uh, along with uh, Senator Rubio. And I think that, you know, Senator Rubio, you know, I know that he's focused on securing the border first. I, I know for a fact that he's focused on securing the border first. Now, in terms of uh, Snowden, you know, we do have the Patriot Act, and there are extreme circumstances where you can actually go in and, and seize the records. Now, I think that this is more broadly that the government's been doing, and unless it rises to an imminent threat or the national security level, they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. And what Snowden should have done was he should have followed the Whistleblower Act. He has that access. Instead, he discloses information in a manner that is illegal, and he should have followed the law. Kevin, you've got the last question for Gabe Gomez. Go. Hi there, Mr. Gomez. Uh, you're running on a platform to say that you turn limits and that you were not for lobbying. Going back to January, your letter to Deval Patrick asking for the special Senate seat, okay, is lobbying. But aside from all that, how can we truly believe and trust that you're going to differentiate yourself then on this November will be 38 years of Ed Markey not going along to get along.
I mean, we don't have enough time to go into the difference between me and Congressman Markey. I can tell you that right now. I know that, you know, my my pitch to you is, are you going to trust a Navy SEAL who's going to put the people and the country before party and politics like he's done his whole life and serve you? Or are you going to continue to trust, and who's also going to have solutions to go down there and fix these problems and, and as a plan to reboot Congress? Or are you going to trust Congressman Markey, who has always put the party and politics before the people and does not have any plan to fix Washington, which is completely broken and has no plans for the problems that we have going forward? That's the question people are going to ask. Who do they trust, and who are they going to feel best going down to D.C. to represent them? We have been talking with Gabe Gomez. He is the Senate candidate for the Republican Party for the U.S. Special Senate race. Gabe, thank you so much for coming in studio. You're a stand-up guy. Let me just give you a chance, a final word, a final appeal to uh, members of Cooner Country. I appreciate it, Jeff. And, you know, I'm running because I've got four young kids. And I want my kids and everybody else's kids to have a chance at the American dream, the same dream that I was able to fulfill when I came here. And, you know, this election is about the future. It's not about the past. This election is about new and fresh ideas, not old and stale ideas. And this election is about putting people before party and politics. And what I'll bring to this job is a military man's discipline, a father's sensitivity, and a businessman's experience. 37 years is enough time to go down there and make a difference. He has not made a difference in 37 years, and I respectfully ask for your vote on June 25th. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you, Gabe.